The Legend of Sargon of Akkad, circa 2300 BCE. Sargon, the mighty king, king of Akkad, am I. My mother was lowly, my father I did not know. The brother of my father dwelt in the mountain. My city is Azupiranu, which is situated on the banks of the Euphrates. My lowly mother conceived me. In secret she brought me forth. She placed me in a basket of reeds. She closed my entrance with bitumen. She cast me upon the rivers which did not overflow me. The river carried me. It brought me to Aki, the irrigator. The irrigator in the goodness of his heart lifted me out. Aki the irrigator, as his own son brought me up. Aki the irrigator, as his gardener appointed me. When I was a gardener, the goddess Ishtar loved me, and for four years I ruled the kingdom. The black-headed peoples I ruled, I governed. Mighty mountains with axes of bronze I destroyed. I ascended the upper mountains, I burst through the lower mountains. The country of the sea I besieged three times. Dilmun I captured. Into the great Dur Ilu I went up. I, Lacuna. I altered, Lacuna. Whatsoever king shall be exalted after me, Lacuna. Let him rule. Let him govern the black-headed peoples. Mighty mountains with axes of bronze let him destroy. Let him ascend the upper mountains. Let him break through the lower mountains. The country of the sea let him besiege three times. Dilmun let him capture. To great Dur Ilu let him go up. The Sargon Legend, Segment A To the sanctuary like a cargo ship, to its great furnaces, to see that its canals, waters of joy, to see that the hose till the arable tracts, and that the fields to turn the house of Keek was to like a haunted town into a living settlement again. Its king shepherd, Urzababa, rose like Utu over the house of Keek. Anne and Enlil, however, authoritatively decided by their holy command to alter his term of reigning and to remove the prosperity of the palace. Then Sargon, his city was the city of Lacuna. His father was Libum, his mother Lacuna, Sargon, Lacuna, with a happy heart since he was born. Unknown number of lines missing. Segment B. One day, after the evening had arrived and Sargon had brought the regular deliveries to the palace, Urzababa was sleeping and dreaming in the holy bedchamber, his holy residence. He realised what the dream was about, but did not put it into words and did not discuss it with anyone. After Sargon had received regular deliveries for the palace, Urzababa appointed him cupbearer, putting him in charge of the drink's cupboard. Holy Inanna did not cease to stand by him. After five or ten days had passed, King Urzababa became frightened in his residence. Like a lion he urinated, sprinkling his legs, and the urine contained blood and pus. He was troubled. He was afraid like a fish floundering in brackish water. It was then that the cupbearer of Enzina's winehouse, Sargon, lay down not to sleep, but lay down to dream. In the dream, Holy Inanna drowned Urzababa in a river of blood. The sleeping Sargon groaned and gnawed the ground. When King Urzababa heard about this, he was brought into the king's presence. Sargon was brought into the presence of Urzababa, who said, Cupbearer, was a dream revealed to you in the night? Sargon answered his king, My king, this is my dream, which I will tell you about. There was a young woman who was as high as the heavens and as broad as the earth. She was firmly set as the base of a wall. For me, she drowned you in a great river, a river of blood. Urzababa chewed his lips. He became seriously afraid. He spoke to his chancellor. My royal sister, Holy Inanna, is going to change my finger into a lacuna of blood. She will drown Sargon, the cupbearer, in the great river. Belik Tikal, chief smith, man of my choosing who can write tablets. I will give you orders. Let my orders be carried out. Let my advice be followed. Now then, the cupbearer was delivered my bronze hand mirror to you in the e Sikal, the fated house. Throw them, the mirror and Sargon, into the mould like statues. Belik Tikal heeded his king's words, 
and prepared the moulds in the Isakal, the fated house. The king spoke to Sargon, Go and deliver my bronze hand mirrors to the chief smith. Sargon left the palace of Urzababa. Holy Anana, however, did not cease to stand at his right side. Before he had come within five or ten Nindan of the Isakil, the fated house, Holy Anana turned around towards him and blocked his way, saying, The Isakil is a holy house. No one polluted with blood should enter it. Thus he met the chief smith of the king only at the gate of the fated house. After he delivered the king's bronze hand mirror to the chief smith of Belik Tikal, the chief smith, and threw it into the mould like statues. After five or ten days had passed, Sargon came into the presence of Urzababa, the king. He came into the palace, firmly founded like a great mountain. King Urzababa became frightened in his residence. He realised what it was about, but did not put it into words, and did not discuss it with anyone. Urzababa became frightened in his bedchamber, his holy residence. He realised what it was about, but did not put it into words, and did not discuss it with anyone. In those days, although writing words on tablets existed, putting tablets into envelopes did not yet exist. King Urzababa dispatched Sargon, the creature of the gods, to Lagal Zagazi in Uruk, with a message written on clay, which was about murdering Sargon. Unknown number of lines missing. Segment C. With the wife of Lagal Zagazi, Lacuna, she, Lacuna, her femininity as a shelter, Lugal Zagzi did not, Lacuna. The envoy, come, he directed his steps to the brick-built Iana. Lugal Zagzi did not grasp it. He did not talk to the envoy. But as soon as he did talk to the envoy, Lacuna. The lord said, alas, and sat in the dust. Lugal Zagzi replied to the envoy, envoy, Sargon does not yield. After he has submitted Sargon, Lacuna. Lugal Zagzi, Lacuna. Sargon, Lacuna, Lugal Zagazi, Lacuna. Why, Lacuna, Sargon, Lacuna. Chronicle of the Early Kings. Tablet A. Sargon, king of Akkad, came to power in the reign of Ishtar, and he had neither rival nor equal. His splendour over the lands it diffused. He crossed the sea in the east. In the eleventh year he conquered the western land to its farthest point. He brought it under one authority. He set up his statues there, and ferried the West's booty across on barges. He stationed his court officials at intervals of five double hours, and ruled in unity the tribes of the land. He marched to Kizalu, and turned Kizalu into a ruined heap, so that there was not even a perch for a bird left. Afterwards, in his old age, all of the lands rebelled again and surrounded him in Akkad. Sargon went out to fight, and brought about their defeat, he overthrew them and overpowered their extensive army. Afterwards, Subatu attacked Sargon in full force and called him to arms. Sargon set an ambush and completely defeated them. He overpowered their extensive army and sent their possessions to Akkad. He dug up the dirt of the pit of Babylon and made a counterpart of Babylon next to Akkad. Because of the wrong he had done, the great lord Marduk became angry and wiped out his family by famine. From east to west, the subjects rebelled against him, and Marduk afflicted him with insomnia.